Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Paul Hervey, I'm the chairman of the Bay SA, and we're going to start a minute ahead of time. The welcome to Parliament House uh, for the grand final debate at year eight level. It's been a fantastic season again, 2021. 60 schools involved and almost 300 teams, culminating in the grand final for the year eight division here this morning. Let's get started. Good evening, uh, sorry, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2021 Year 8 Division Debating SA Grand Final Debate. My name is Patrick Henschke, and I am the chairman of this debate. The timekeeper is Trushi Purohit. Um, the topic of this debate is that students at South Australian schools who hate PE should be able to help people do yard work instead. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Pembroke School, consisting of first speaker, William Fu, second speaker, Jason Kang, and third speaker, Zachary Yeand. The negative team seated from, to my left is from Glenunga International High School, consisting of first speaker, Nidhi Sobti, second speaker, Artan Kothiri, and third speaker, Johan Rajapaksha. This grand final debate will be judged by a panel of five adjudicators who are Ms. Tam Hanker, Ms. Adair, Mr. Wadlow, Ms. Chaw, and Ms. Lowen. The speaking time of this debate is four minutes. A single warning bell will sound at three minutes and a double bell will sound at four minutes. If required, a continuous bell will sound 30 seconds after the second bell, indicating that the speaker must conclude their speech. I ask that all mobile phones and other electronic devices be switched off for the duration of the debate. I declare this debate open and call upon William Fu to open the affirmative case. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that students at South Australian schools who hate PE should be able to help people do yard work instead. The Cambridge Dictionary defined hate as an intense feeling of dislike. PE or physical education is school classes in which children exercise and learn to play sports. And yard work is work done in the garden or outdoor areas. Therefore, we, the affirmative team, define the topic as students at South Australian schools who have an intense dislike of classes in which they are expected to play sports and exercise should be able to help people work in the garden and outdoor areas instead. It will involve the student going to someone's house at a prearranged time outside of school to help them out for an hour. This is the model that was used in Dubuque, Iowa by Tim Hitzler, uh, referred, uh, referenced by a debating essay. We, the affirmative team, know that this statement is true. Today, as first speaker, I'll be talking to you about the physical and mental benefits of yard work and how PE is not for everyone. Our second speaker will be talking about how gardening can be a substitute to PE for health benefits and that students helping others in yard work is beneficial for raising a kinder person. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. I will be discussing two points. My first point is that exercise have been shown to have many physical and mental health benefits. EnrichEducationUK.com have found that any outdoor physical activity can improve physical fitness and prevent diabetes, heart disease, asthma and high blood pressures. However, the benefits of exercise are not exclusive to PE lessons only. Studies have found that any regular physical activity can yield these benefits. For children who hate PE, yard work in the form of helping elderly or disabled people attend to their gardens and grow fruits and vegetables will provide, with, will provide them with the exercise they need to reap in these benefits. In addition to the benefits gained through exercise, it also teaches the students about the value of community and the chance to help others who are in need. Healthtalk.healthcare.org have found that working in the garden helps build self-esteem. Is good for, it's good for the heart, helps reduce stress, makes people happier, boosts vitamin D levels, unites families and communities working together in the garden, and last but not least, allows people to grow their own fruits and vegetables. Now my second point is that PE is not for everyone. 
A study by ResearchGate.net surveyed that 234 Year 10 students from eight different secondary schools regarding bullying during PE. The study found that 18% of students experienced physical bullying in PE, 24% experienced verbal bullying, and 20% experienced social bullying. Furthermore, those who experienced frequent bullying in PE did not intend on taking those classes in future. These results show how prevalent bullying is in PE and how it negatively impacts future participation in exercise. Now to recap. You have heard that students who hate PE, um, who hate PE, yard work is an effective alternative for physical activity and have additional benefits on mental health and community. You have also heard about bullying during PE have led students to stop exercising. British horticulturalist Gertrude Jerkel once said, the love of gardening is a seed once sown that never dies. Give students who hate PE an option of yard work so that their good mental and physical health can grow and never die. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the affirmative team, know that students in South Australian schools who hate PE should be able to help people do yard work instead. Thank you. I call upon Nidhi Sobti to open the negative case. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, Honourable Adjudicators, and my esteemed fellow peers. The topic for our debate today is whether South Australian students that hate PE should be able to do yard work instead. And as the negative team, we know that this stance is so very obviously false. We agree with the definition provided by the affirmative team. I, as the first negative speaker, will be talking about the health-related benefits of physical education and how an absence of this subject can cause much harm for students. I will then outline the importance of balance in a student's life and how PE and yard work are not interchangeable. Our second speaker will then explain the drastic costs that will come with the hypothetical implementation of this topic. Finally, our third speaker will be rebutting and summarising our team's case. Now to my rebuttals. The first speaker of the opposition has told you that this will have a large impact on community as students will be able to help people and become more empathetic and kinder, a more kinder generation. But you have not taken into consideration the amount of jobs that, we, that will be lost through this. Over 1,000 work, 100,000 workers all over the country work in aged care and all these jobs could be risked if there were students who could help them for absolutely nothing. These people usually gain all of their income and they could lose more and more clients to the point that they could not afford to take care of themselves or their family. The amount of economical loss that would come off this change could deteriorate so many people's lives. Additionally, they have said that students do not want, like some students do not want to do PE, but is bullying due to bullying that is prevalent? Um, but is bullying not prevalent in every subject? For example, if the student is not so um, great at mathematics, he may be bullied by his peers for this reason. It, it is quite obvious that bullying may be prevalent in all subjects since children will always be children with their own mindsets and own mentalities. Take it, do not take it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Take it from the students of Australia. School students between the ages of 14 and 16 from every state and territory were surveyed by YouGov Galaxy about the experiences of the Australian education system, looking at both subjective and objective factors. In the results, one main critic showed up, and that was to do more PE. Why? Now moving on to my first point. Physical education provides students with so much more than the experiences of learning sports. In fact, it has been proven to be linked to betterment in academic performance, such as exams and presentations. A study conducted by UCLA showed the positive associations between fitness, cognitive function, and academic achievement. The 
results of this research proved that students who had at least one hour of structured physical exercise performed better academically as opposed to students who had no such activity at all. This just goes to show how invaluable PE is and that it must, must not be traded by students for yard work since yard work does not require or encourage any physical exertion. Dire and repetitive tasks in yard work do not achieve the same skills when compared to the mental and academic benefits provided by PE. Hence, they are not interchangeable, and that is why even for students that hate PE, they cannot do yard work instead. Now to my second point, which is closely intertwined with my previous one. A balance is a necessity in students' life, and physical education achieves just this. According to SA Health, over 60% of adults and a quarter of all children are obese. Not overweight, obese. This is the dire situation with the current level of physical education, so you can only imagine what will happen when students are no longer required to engage in physical activity. Moreover, a physical education session in school, especially throughout childhood, provides immediate health benefits, such as positively affecting body composition and musculoskeletal development, as listed by Melina Bockard. Yard work simply does not achieve these positive benefits that are gained through physical education. So with one in four students already obese, it's time to be thinking about doing more physical education, not less. That is why physical education must not be swapped out by students for yard work. Therefore, to conclude, PE must not be replaced by yard work if a student supposedly detests the subject. This is due to the fact that the benefits for the student are not limited to just physical betterment, but also improves academic performance. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, yard work has no perks. Thank you. To continue the affirmative case, please welcome Jason Kane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr Chairman. The topic for this debate is that students at South Australian schools who hate PE should be able to help people do yard work instead. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe this statement to be true. The negative team's first speaker has tried to tell you that PE brings a multitude of effects on academic performance and also reduces the risk of obesity. We agree that obesity is an issue that needs to be solved. However, it must be stated that one size does not fit all. And one method for PE teaching cannot work for every single student. If a student's hate for PE makes a normal approach ineffective for them, then it's the duty of the education system to provide them with an alternative that provides the same benefits, such as yard work. The negative team's first speaker has also tried to tell you that yard work and PE are not interchangeable. This is false, as there are also mental and physical health benefits that are related to yard work, as I will delve deeper into, into my first argument. Furthermore, they said that the amount of aged care workers will be un unemployed. We agree that employment is important, However, the amount of students that sign up for yard work will not cause a major dent in the amount of employment in South Australia. I'll be discussing two points tonight. My first one will be on how gardening can be a substitute for PE in regards to physical benefits. My second point is that the program will teach a student many values, just like in any sport. Firstly, yard work is of great benefit to the body. According to the SA government, the aim of PE class is to advocate for the health of students, also known, also known as ensuring they are fit and healthy. Gardening is an exercise with similar health benefits to many sports. According to the American Heart Association, gardening is considered a moderate aerobic exercise. This puts on the same cardiovascular level as playing tennis or slowly riding a bike. According to the Royal College of Physicians, gardening also reduces the risks of depression, dementia, cancer, diabetes, and also cardiovascular disease, with frequent gardening reducing the risk of heart attack by 30%. Furthermore, as the affirmative team, we have also contacted Mr. Hitzler, the person running the program. 
who stated that the program gave the ki kids a sense of appreciation, participation and community pride, helping them with any stress they have, because it is an exercise with a purpose. He also said that 75% of students who chose the program would like to do it a second time. Most sources in academia claim that gardening is not only a form of exercise, but also a really good one at that. If a student hates PE, then this means that the normal ways of teaching PE is ineffective for them. The aim of the curriculum is to ensure that students are healthy. If the normal approach to PE fails for a student, then would it be helpful to provide them with an alternative, such as yard work? My second point will explain how helping people do yard work builds someone's character, similarly to playing a sport. Sport teaches students about many important life values, such as perseverance and teamwork. However, yard work also achieves the same purpose. It trains perseverance in the participating students as it requires patience and endurance to complete a task. Furthermore, the act of gardening alone trains the student's self-discipline skills, something that is not learnt through PE. There are many positive attributes to take away from PE, but as stated by our first speaker, traditional PE is not an effective means of teaching for every individual student. By having yard work as an alternative, this means that all students, whether or not the traditional approach works for them or not, will be educated on a multitude of life values. This, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why the program should be an alternative to PE, as it offers students who hate PE another chance at getting life values. Now to recap, my first point explained why gardening is a very good substitute for PE in regards to health benefits. My second point explained how the program can help to build a student's personality. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Chairman, in conclusion, that is why we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that students in South Australian schools who hate PE should be able to help people do yard work instead. Thank you. To continue the negative case, please welcome Ahan Kothiri. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as the negative team and contrary to our opposition, we strongly believe that South Australian students who hate PE should not be able to do yard work instead. As the second speaker, I will highlight the large costs that will be required to facilitate yard work alongside the cost for PE as a subject. Furthermore, I will also prove how PE promotes essential life skills that are critical for children to understand on their way to adulthood. But before explaining further, I will first outline some vital flaws addressed amongst the opposition's case so far. The second affirmative speaker has said that yard work can provide the same benefits as PE in terms of the physical and mental factors. And whilst it may provide the same benefit, it does not delve deep enough into these skills as organised sport and PE can I mean, are we really to expect that gardening can provide the same skills as a group of children doing the same sport can in terms of physical factors? And even if yard work was to provide these skills, ladies and gentlemen, we need to, need, we need to think of other factors such as cost, which I will explain later in my arguments. Moving on to my first point. If yard work was to replace PE for students who hate it, this would come with a variety of pricey expenses, mainly revolving around the cost of supervision. Act 1998 decrees that by Australian federal law, all children under the age of 18 must be supervised at school when not catered for by their parent or guardian. And because students may go out of school to do yard work as addressed by our opposition's model, this factor is not only inclusive, but it comes with a hefty price. The minimum wage for teachers in Australia is an additional $34 an hour above their usual salary when supervising children outside of standardised classes. Ladies and gentlemen, this would be like students going out on excursions every week. And the sole reason schools rarely conduct excursions is due to their astronomical cost to account for every student. And yard work does just 
just this. On the other hand, PE lessons only require a single teacher per class in most circumstances, and this is why even if a few students may dislike PE, it does not justify the thousands of dollars that would be spent each year to have additional supervisors for students doing yard work. And this leads to my second point. With PE being mandatory for students to partake in, not only does it provide a multitude of health benefits, but it gives them the particular and necessary life skills for a reality outside of school. But before we look at these life skill factors, we really need to consider what is causing hate for students in PE. And from this, there are two observable factors of hate in PE. Firstly, unpredictable social factors such as shaming and bullying. And as mentioned uh, in our first speaker's rebuttal, if a student dislikes PE because of this, then while it is understandable, it really isn't the fault of the course and could apply to literally any subject. The second reason why students may hate PE is because they just don't want to do the physical activity. But if we are going to just let students not do PE because they don't like the physical activity, what message does that tell them and other students? Just imagine it from the perspective of a student who loves PE but dislikes, say, maths. Why is it okay for PE hating students to just not do PE while this PE loving student is still stuck having to do maths? Ladies and gentlemen, this sets a self-centered and undisciplined mindset for selected students. And if this att attitude continues outside of school, you can only imagine the consequences that students will face when they do their daily jobs. Therefore, for the sake of equity and student discipline, we would have to not let students do yard work instead of PE. To conclude, from the drastic cost yet beneficial life skills PE brings to students, you must be convinced that South Australian students who hate PE should not merely be allowed to do yard work, arguably as an excuse. Sure, yard work may well provide a range of other benefits. We are not denying this at all. Rather, we are saying how yard work is a completely different aspect altogether and should not be interchanged with a skill as vital to a child as PE. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, yard work has no perks. To conclude the affirmative case, I call upon Zachary Yeen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for this debate is that students at South Australian schools who hate PE should be able to help people do yard work instead. We, the affirmative team, believe this statement to be true. I will first rebut the negative team's points and then summarise our team's case. The negative team's first speaker has tried to tell you that PE is very beneficial to the body. We are not saying that PE is bad for students. We are saying that there, we agree that there are some benefits, but those kids who do not enjoy PE and do not try will get a second chance to do physical activity in the form of yard work. Also, as stated earlier, people disliking PE in school Means that, may, means that they may be discouraged to participate in physical activity in the future. Meanwhile, yard work will give students a relaxing hobby they can keep for life. Also, yard work would add community benefits for people who cannot do their own yard work. In fact, when we interviewed Mr. Hiltzer, Mr. Hidsler, as our other speakers said, he stated that this program promotes physical activity because it is physical activity with a purpose. The negative team's first speaker has tried to tell you that there needs to be a balance um, because of obesity. Despite B being part of the curriculum, obesity is still a massive problem. It clearly hasn't worked. Perhaps better education about diets, taxing unhealthy foods and encouraging people to be walking or riding to school is more likely to make the difference. Also, those kids who hate P are not going to try on it and it will not solve this ever-growing issue. In fact, when we inter 
viewed Mr. Kiltzer, as our other speakers said, he stated that this program promotes physical activity, which means that people may be fitter. Also, if a state... The negative team's second speaker has tried to tell you that the program would be a waste of time. A waste of money, sorry. It would only be a waste of money if nobody was to benefit from it. But this is not the case. It can already be seen that there are many students who do not like Pete and do not try in it. In, the, in these students, they, the resources and money used for PE is wasted. As stated earlier, this will allow these students to participate in a different kind of physical activity that they will hopefully enjoy. Isn't it unfair that kids who like PE have, uh, have an option, but kids who don't just have to stick with PE? Also, it is not going to cost anything for teachers to supervise. In Mr. Hiltz's program, it was a volunteerable position by the teachers, and they generally had two people showing up, two teachers. The negative team's second speaker has tried to tell you that gardening is an easy option out of something hard, and it will promote laziness. Yard work will not teach kids to slack off, but rather many important life skills. It will give kids good morals so that they will be more likely to help people more in the future. It will also give many necessary life skills, such as how to look after a garden or how to be kind to people. Additionally, gardening is not lazy. The likely alternative, sitting in front of a computer screen, is lazy. This system aims to steer students away from this so they can instead help society. Now I will summarise our team's case. Our first speaker, Will, spoke to you about the benefits of gardening and yard work. This is because gardening can have some massive physical and mental benefits to students. He also spoke to you about how PE is not for everyone. This is because some students are not good at it and this would bear them the humiliation from their classmates. Our second speaker, Jason, spoke to you about how gardening can give the same benefits as PE. This is because students will be active. He also spoke to you about how we will raise a kind person. This is because we will have experience with doing charitable work and this will encourage them to do so in the future. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, yard work is a very, very good idea instead of PE because it's going to promote, is going to promote physical activity for the people who don't like PE. Thank you. Uh, to conclude the negative case in this morning's debate, I call upon Yahan Rajapaksha. John F. Kennedy once said that physical fitness is not only one of the most important keys to a healthy body, it is the basis of dynamic and creative intellectual activity. Physical education is an essential part of a child's life, but soon they may not have to learn this. How can we let this happen? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's debate is that students at Hey PE should be able to do yard work instead. And as the negative team, we strongly disagree with this statement for reasons aforementioned by our prior speakers. As a third speaker, I shall begin by pointing out some significant flaws in the opposition's arguments before summing up my own team's case. Now I would like to address their model, which states that students will be able to go out of school to do yard work as favored by external source. However, firstly, this is subjective and only favored by this one person. Secondly, as our second speaker said, we have to account for major factors like cost. The first speaker of the opposition has tried to tell you that yard works build self-esteem and multiple other benefits, but these benefits are also attainable by PE and the community benefits in this are disregardable as they are, these students are meeting people they will probably never see for the rest of their life. They have also brought up the point of bullying, but this, is this the way that we should deal with this? Should we just move away from the bullying instead of dealing with it? If we move away from bullying, this will just negatively affect the bully and the victim. 
The second speaker of the opposition has stated that gardening could substitute PE since it has a similar amount of health benefits. But have you brought into consideration how yard work will not have the same amount of societal benefits? So many friendships can be gained from, the, from group sports. And they have also stated that yard work can build values. While this is true, should we also take out the values that were built with PE? Should we take these out of our curriculum just to initiate new values? Ladies and gentlemen, these two subjects cannot be interchanged. The third speaker of the opposition has tried to tell you that yard work is a good substitute for PE since PE is not f fixing obesity. We agree to this, but have you not noticed how much it brings it down? If we were to take this out of the curriculum, the amount of obese people would probably skyrocket. They have also brought up the point that most people are volunteers in this program, so supervision will not be a problem. But have you noticed that this is only a slight sample size? If the size was to be bigger, they would need paid workers. To sum up our team's arguments, our first speaker has brought to you the point of physical and mental health of the students that shall be thoroughly enhanced by the inclusion of physical education over yard work. Our second speaker has informed you of the necessary life skills that shall be gained by the inclusion of PE in the curriculum. He has also elaborated on the economic deterioration that shall result from the implementation of this policy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sure that these points have shown you how essential PE is on our curriculum. This is a choice that will degrade every student that is allowed to choose yard work. Have any of you been to forced to do something and ended up loving it? There are so many ways PE will improve a student's life. Over yard work, PE is the base of healthy education, so why would we ever take it away? How are we meant to watch as students get their health stripped away from them? How are we meant to watch as the younger generations grow up without the same start that we got or better? Ladies and gentlemen, we should not let students who hate PE do yard work instead. I leave you with one message. Yard work has no perks.
I call upon a representative of the adjudicator, adjudication panel to come forward and award the debate. Thank you. Congratulations to both teams on making it to the grand finals and for such an entertaining debate. As each of the five adjudicators arrived at his and her decision, independent of the others, there is no individual feedback. Today's decision was unanimous. The winner of the grand final for 2021 is the affirmative team from Pembroke School. Well done and congratulations to both teams. I call upon a member of the runner-up team to give a vote of thanks. What a season it's been. Um, I first of all want to thank the Parliament House for hosting such a lovely event. It's been so much fun to do debating essay, especially would like to say thank you to the opposition for, her, for having such an engaging debate. It was so fun in, um, debating with you guys. It was actually like a challenge. And yeah, um, I'd like to thank our team, of course, all of the like, late nighters we've pulled. It's just been amazing. It's been an amazing time debating with you guys, and I hope we can do it all over again next year. Um, I'd like to thank Isaac, especially. He's helped so much. We can't thank you enough, Isaac. Um, Thank you to all the parents that brought us here. Um, thank you to everyone present, actually. Thank you to the adjudicators for like having such a fair debate, marking us, doing everything. And finally, thank you to Debating SA. It's been such a lovely time. To I call upon a member of the winning team to second that vote of thanks. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the negative team for such an entertaining debate and we'd also like to applaud the uh, efforts of every uh, debater here because it's been a very long season and a lot of times the debate we put in a lot of effort so very well done for that. Um, I would like to thank everyone in the audience, all the parents and the children that made it out here to watch us. I'd like to thank our panel of five wonderful adjudicators for coming out and adjudicating this debate. Um, we'd also like to thank uh, our coach, Mr. Freesmith, for making all of this possible. We'd like to thank the South Australian government for providing this extravagant place to debate in. And lastly, but probably most importantly, we'd like to thank Debating SA for providing us a, such a great way to you know, do debating as a hobby. So thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now declare this debate closed.